Tonight, Hurricane K, a widespread threat to Baja California and many other systems to track tonight. Now the latest around the wide world of tropics. anticipated active spell of the tropics appears to be with us now with three hurricanes active in the western hemisphere Earl most recently being upgraded just now and a new tropical storm forming in the western pacific following in the footsteps of the remnants of Hinnomnor which are now way over eastern Russia Here's the Atlantic and you can see Danielle way up there and Earl now uh, could still be a threat to Bermuda, watch closely and two other areas of interest that could end up forming in the main development region although it would appear that they will be short lived if they do. Danielle no threat to land at this time. K certainly is a threat to land with hurricane watches in effect for central parts of the Baja California Peninsula and it could strike there possibly even as a category 2 if it manages to strengthen a bit more and the remnants of uh, Javier are still active uh, but pretty much done for. In the western pacific we're now looking at a new tropical storm 14W that the JTWC are already forecasting to become a category 4 near the southern Ryukyu Islands a similar story to Hidden in the last few days. We certainly don't want that, but we have to uh, take a look at it realistically. And in the Indian Ocean, we now have a 30% chance marked here by our team for a potential Indian landfall in the next three days. Something that GFS has been on for quite a while. Other models still not really with it just yet, though. Latest satellite imagery, this is how the Atlantic Ocean is looking and as you can see quite a bit busier now and Earl in the last few hours really starting to show off uh, potentially an eye forming and Danielle of course still um, trudging along with its uh, rather stable intensity at category 1. K also a category 1 and extremely large. It's uh, its effects are already starting to be felt on the Baja California Peninsula and rain rates will certainly get up there soon. The storm itself struggling a little bit to be honest in terms of dry air possibly I think that might be. Uh, looks better on visible as we take a look at this imagery with eye quite clearly visible. Uh, although it is having issues you can quite clearly see even from this view. Uh, have the air well off to the left hand side there but you get an idea about K's size uh, from north to south uh, particularly extending right up it there into northern Mexico at this time. Looking further towards the east Gulf of Mexico looking quiet and as I mentioned previously it's coming up to a year now since we last saw, saw any storm there the longest such gap in 45 years. It's hit there is Earl though uh, now a hurricane Bermuda's up there in its northern bands or near its northern bands and that could still be affected by the storm with at least tropical storm force winds got to watch out for that in the next few days and Danielle which is way off in the North Atlantic and now moving a little bit further towards the northeast uh, it is quite high in latitude and to be honest it's doing pretty well considering the uh, circumstances it had where it wasn't moving very much um, certainly had the potential to be much weaker due to upwelling. And now look at down there at the uh, main development region, looking at that area of interest there to the southwest of Cape Verde. That's been given a 60% chance by uh, both the National Hurricane Center and our team. And another area of interest behind it there, you can see just emerging off the coast of Africa with a fairly low chance at this time. Western Pacific, you can quite clearly see where that new tropical storm has formed, uh, although it is still somewhat questionable with its uh, interaction with that other system that's just to its northeast, uh, but it would appear that our team are now on board with a tropical storm. JTWC last we saw was a tropical depression, I'm not sure if that's been updated yet. Here's the North Indian Ocean, and you might see the beginnings, rumblings of a new system starting to form in the eastern Bay of Bengal, not far from the Andaman Islands. This system will eventually curve towards the west and then go on to affect the eastern coast of India, possibly in Andhra Pradesh. Looking down towards the southern hemisphere, a frontal system still being carried along towards the east there, starting to run out of steam as it approaches Fiji. Other than that, 
a little bit of rain moving through into New South Wales and Queensland, but not too much going on down in that area. Sea surface temperatures today underneath K are around 28 degrees Celsius. It's got a little bit of a uh, pick up right now after it was over a little bit of a cooler area not long ago. Earl there, still depicted as a TS uh, admittedly, but it is now a hurricane. Uh, that was very late news. Uh, over very warm waters and should strengthen much further beyond this point. And Danielle just holding on to those 26 degrees Celsius waters. It's about to lose them though. So Danielle is almost on its way out. Indian Ocean, Bay of Bengal, where we have that system. You can see there very warm temperatures, prime conditions for sea services at least. Uh, and in the Western Pacific there, very warm temperatures once again, 30 to 31 degrees. Yes, a cooler area where Hinnomnor was, but it is still enough to carry a significant storm if it gets going whilst it's in that 30 degree patch. So it's all still there for the Western Pacific. Looking at the sea surface temperature anomalies, you will note that there's a big cool gap where Hinnomnor was, but to its east where that storm's forming, it is a little bit warmer than average much warmer than average in the subtropical Atlantic where those two storms are very good conditions where K is as well it's in a slight spell of warmer waters as well so almost all of these systems are under good conditions for potential strengthening oceanic heat content in the Atlantic is mainly comprised around the Bahamas around the east coast of Florida and the a large part of the Caribbean Sea and looking towards the eastern Pacific not much around there but the western Pacific boiling hot with that oceanic heat content primed once again for further storm outbreaks and 14w is over a decent amount over 125 there valued as well this is the gfs over the next five days you can see that earl becomes a substantial hurricane and actually gfs peaks it as a 130 mile an hour category four there as it uh, sways northeastwards danielle and earl and then another system forms behind it in between that and this next system in the Atlantic that might, might form on its own accord and our other system behind it as well near Cape Verde so there could potentially be five systems in the North Atlantic although Danielle will easily be a remnant by then and Earl pretty much too. Here's Kay's progress you can see there a northerly jog and then is it a landfall just about on that little tip there on the uh, Baja California Peninsula still looking out there towards the Channel Islands of California uh, which could get uh, tropical storm conditions the mainland maybe can't rule it out that's something that's certainly raising eyebrows in the Southern California community definitely uh, but for the coast of Mexico though we could be looking at hurricane force winds watching that storm in the Western Pacific while well, it develops there uh, looks like it's later than expected from the GFS and even so the GFS intensifies it into a major typhoon towards the end of that five day period moving through the southern Ryukyu Islands once again Miyakojima and Yayama so that would be a terrible scenario after what we've already seen just a few days ago when Hinnomnor blasted through there as a category I think it was a two coming on to a three North Indian Ocean looking again at this system you can see a tropical storm signature and even a strong tropical storm there just before it makes landfall one that spins up um, very quickly which are the most uh, worrisome systems really because already we're, we're at 72 hours out or less so not much warning if that does form and what happens when it moves inland it then crosses to the western side onto the coast that's been most vulnerable recently Pakistan particularly uh, as we've seen in the news and this is the rainfall estimates from K and you can see significant rainfall amounts uh, all the way up the Baja California Peninsula and even into Southern California we're looking at maybe three or four inches up there but in Mexico we're looking at maximums possibly of 10 inches that's 250 millimeters maybe 12 inches there actually that's 300 millimeters all along the coast uh, very high amounts for some areas and if it happens quickly high rain rates then you're looking at major flash flooding issues especially for such a dry area um, and now I think we'll be looking at the Western Pacific yes check out what the GFS has in store for the rain rates on this next storm it's 
almost as bad as Hinnomnor actually when you take a look at the rain rate it can produce when the storm moves through there some pink areas that's over 16 inches of rain uh, and then it moves through China the eastern coast towards Shanghai uh, take a look at those rain values in the middle of it all maybe 22 inches according to the latest GFS run and that's for a storm that keeps moving Inamnor managed to do a lot more while stalling of course but this storm moves and still produces 22 inches now that of course is still speculative as the storm is still in its very early stages but that is something to watch out for very much indeed for the east coast of China there around Shanghai possibly 8 inches there as well and that constitutes 200 millimeters 22 inches is quite a lot I'm trying to figure out how much that is that is over 500 millimeters 550 if that was to occur but that is just a little idea right now of what we might see also along India very high rain amounts from that potential system longer range Danielle moves through the British Isles Earl was that going somewhere down towards the Canary Islands and the next storm there that formed a hurricane once again in the subtropics it's a season for the subtropics this year quite clearly uh, what happens down in the main development region nothing much it's uh, tables have turned definitely in the Atlantic this year and it's all subtropical activity that's being forecasted and maybe that second hurricane East Pacific, what comes after K? Well, let's take a look. One or two little areas of interest that are circulating around there, but doesn't look like there's any tropical storms until the end of the loop. There it is, when two form at the same time. Um, that's on day 10, so that's quite a way out, uh, but that's a potential for more storms happening in the Eastern Pacific in what has been uh, a little bit of a season that belied the forecasts. Uh, it is around average now, but people were expecting well below. Western Pacific, there's that typhoon once again, 14W, moving into the east coast of China as a weak typhoon, category one, and then moving inland all the way up to the coast towards Beijing. And then after that, an enormous system there tries to form at the very late stage. So for China, that's something to watch out for. Taiwan, southern Japanese islands, that track, of course, could change substantially. And once again, that next system trying to develop. Oh, oh, we're here. Uh, scan the barcode for the latest products in the Force 13 merch store. We have animations, individual and full season animations also by request and are still waiting for Hone t-shirt still on sale because we're still waiting for Hone. In the silly range then, let's see what the Eastern Pacific has in store. Don't take these seriously, but here we have two hurricanes maybe certainly the eastern one was and makes landfall in mexico and the other one moves out to sea uh, so another potential landfall for the uh, more tropical areas of mexico this time with that second hurricane uh, not much else to talk about there in the atlantic that other hurricane moves off and dies in a typical fashion which is why we didn't show it figured it was a bit boring uh, those are the eastern pacific ones what happens in the Western Pacific? Well, this extremely broad system starts to get itself together and tries to become a typhoon. Look how enormous that is there. Uh, that's probably why it's long range. Uh, there it is affecting the eastern coast of Japan with tropical storm force winds for a time and then shooting off towards the northeast. Another system trying to form in its wake there. Monster systems, certainly in size, not as much in the intensity, but sometimes these things can happen, especially in September, usually August, but sometimes in September, uh, so it's worth looking out for. Well, on this day, September 7th, 2017, Irma was still a Category 5, just north of Puerto Rico, uh, a nation or an area that will be devastated much more later on in the season. Jose was a Category 3 and strengthening, and Katia was a Category 1 off the coast of Veracruz in Mexico and would strengthen later on as well. Some people regard that one as the forgotten hurricane of 2017, although there's quite a few candidates, there were so many that season, that were notable. And back in 2022, a much more relaxing season, apart from Hinnomnor, of course. The next name on the Atlantic naming list is Fiona. In the Eastern Pacific, it will be Leicester, 
and in the Central Pacific we are still waiting for Hone. In the Western Pacific we may be about to get our next name, Wifa, in the North Indian Ocean, also up for grabs, Citrang. So far we've had 55 storms this year in 2022 and some of those colours might not be up to date, the Earl colour particularly, because we rushed to get this out. In the Australian region, the next name is Darien, the Southwest Indian Ocean will start with Ashley, and in the South Pacific next up is Harley. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again with another one tomorrow night.